Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm the author of the OSCE TLM 2.0 documentation. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to describe for you the TLM 2.0 based protocol checker. At Doulos, we deliver training classes, and I originally wrote this protocol checker for use on training classes to help delegates uncover bugs in their labs. Since that time, at Doulos, we've made the checker available, freely available on the Doulos website, so you can download it and use it. So let me say a few words about the purpose of the protocol checker. The base protocol is the key element in the interoperability layer in TLM 2.0, which also consists of the core interfaces, standard sockets and the generic payload. So the base protocol that's being checked encompasses a set of rules for using the standard interfaces and the generic payload together with using the standard phases that mark the beginning and the end of a request and a response. The checker itself gets instantiated in line between an initiator socket and a target socket. So the checker is an extra system C component that you instantiate as a simulation model. And this is a dynamic checker. So it's not a linting tool. It doesn't parse and analyze your source code. It's a simulation model that runs as part of the simulation and may report errors. And there are some obvious things that it can't check. So for example, the protocol checker cannot check that a transaction has been executed correctly. And it can't check that an extension that's supposed to be ignorable has indeed been ignored. The checker is actually a C++ class, and that class is also a system C module. And it's a class template. The template parameter is the bus width. So a socket within the protocol checker can only be bound to a TLM2 dot socket of the correct width. The sockets within the checker are not multiports. So the maximum number of bindings on each of the sockets is set to one. And that means that you bind the protocol checker in line between exactly one initiator port and exactly one target port. You can set the number of checks that the checker performs. This is necessary because the checks aren't free. In fact, they're relatively expensive compared to not doing any checking at all. The default number of checks is set rather arbitrarily to 100,000, but you can override that by calling the setNumChecks method. So if you call setNumChecks with a very large integer, it will effectively keep on checking throughout the whole of the simulation. Or you can turn off checks by calling setNumChecks zero. And you can adjust the number of checks at any time prior to the number of checks being reduced to zero. Once the number of checks hits zero, you can't switch the checks on again. And that's primarily because that was going to be just too difficult to implement. So the protocol checker checks all of the standard core interfaces, the blocking and non-blocking transport interfaces, the direct memory interface and the debug interface. The non-blocking transport is the most complex, so there are most checks associated with NB transport. Direct memory and transport, transport debug have relatively few checks. In fact, there's so few checks that I didn't even bother to turn off those checks when you set the number of checks to zero. So I'll describe briefly the main checks that get performed and also help you understand some of the, the features of the TLM 2.0 interfaces that the checkers are actually checking. So let's start with NB transport. NB transport completes a transaction in multiple phases, and the base protocol supports exactly four phases, marking the beginning of the request, the end of the request, the beginning of the response, and the end of the response. And in TLM 2.0, you can only have a single request and a single response outstanding at any particular point in time through any given socket. Those are called the request and the response exclusion rules. And the checker checks that those exclusion rules are being obeyed. It also checks for proper timing annotation. So if you have a sequence of NB transport calls, then for a given transaction through a given socket, the timing annotation must be strictly non-decreasing. If you combine NB transport and B transport through the same socket at the same time for the same transaction, then blocking and non-blocking transport calls are not allowed to overlap. They must be strictly separated for the same transaction, and that gets checked. 
There's a thorough set of checks to make sure that the attributes of the generic payload are set and modified correctly. So there are checks that the initiator has correctly set all of the attributes to the right default values. The transaction then gets propagated from the initiator through one or more interconnect components to the target. And the protocol checker checks the proper causal sequence there. And if you instantiate multiple checkers along a path from initiator to chart target, then those protocol checkers actually work together behind the scenes to check that the transaction has been properly propagated from initiator through to target. The checkers check that the interconnect only modifies the attributes that it's allowed to modify, which isn't very many actually. It can only modify the address attribute, the um, extensions and that's pretty much it. Then the target is also allowed to modify certain attributes, in particular the extensions, the DMI hint and the data array in the case of a read command. Then the transaction is propagated back to the initiator and again the protocol checkers work together to make sure that the proper causal path has been followed and that the interconnect doesn't make any modifications that it shouldn't. Over each individual hop between initiator socket and target socket, then each request and response um, is completed with an end request and end response phase. And those phases don't have to be propagated causally between initiator to target, but in that case, the request and the response exclusion rules come into play. And as I said previously, those get thoroughly checked. The checker is designed to work with a transaction pool where transaction objects get reused. If the transactions are not pulled and a lot of transactions get generated, the only downside is that the protocol checker will consume a lot of memory because the protocol checker grabs a chunk of memory for each unique transaction that it sees, the assumption being that transaction objects will indeed get pulled and reused. Regarding memory management, there's a number of distinct checks that, checks that get performed. So the most stringent checks occur with NB transport. With a non-blocking transport interface, TLM2 requires that a memory manager is used. So the checker checks that a memory manager is in place and also checks that the generic payload reference count is greater than zero each time it sees a transaction. It also checks that the transaction object doesn't get reallocated whilst it's still in use. That's actually quite a common mistake if you don't think very carefully about how transactions get memory managed. With the blocking transport interface, there's no absolute obligation to use a memory manager and there are fewer checks to perform there. But without a memory manager, the protocol checker does check that extensions are being used properly. And in particular, it checks that whatever component sets an extension also clears that same extension. And that's an obligation if you're not making use of the memory manager. If the protocol checker finds a problem, then it reports it using the standard system C report handler, SC report handler. And the point about doing that is that you can then take control over the behaviour of the report handler, handler if you wish. So the protocol checker uses the message type TLM2 protocol checker and you can use the set actions method of the report handler to control what happens. So for example you could suppress messages or you could have messages written to some external log file. Regarding terms and conditions, the protocol checker comes with an Apache 2.0 license, that's a standard open source license. And although I wrote the protocol checker and also the TLM 2.0 documentation, the protocol checker is not endorsed by OSCE, so it's not the official TLM 2.0 protocol checker, it's just provided by, your do, by DULOS on an as-is basis for your convenience. So at DULOS we deliver training classes. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more, then check out the DULOS website, www.dulos.com, where you'll find details of our training classes, and you can also download the source code of the protocol checker.